You may have heard your teacher make reference to iambic pentameter. You may even have come across this word used in lots of different poems, in different settings, and even in lots of Shakespeare's work. However, maybe it still eludes you as to what does iambic pentameter really mean? Now, it sounds like a really fancy phrase, but it's actually very, very easy to spot it and figure out what iambic pentameter means. So in this video, what I really wanted to do was just really demystify this very intimidating phrase to really show you that firstly, iambic pentameter, you can find it in a lot of verse. Shakespeare loves using it when it comes to his more upper class characters such as dukes and royal blood. However, it's actually very easy to spot. And if you do spot it, especially when it comes to analysis, things like iambic pentameter does draw in the higher marks. So as you can see, behind me essentially what I did was really just show you a quick summary of iambic pentameter however also what I wanted to do is give you three key examples taken from Macbeth, Romeo and Juliet and Julius Caesar these are three of Shakespeare's most famous plays I will show you three separate quotations which use iambic pentameter and show you how you can easily spot it now let's first start off with what iambic pentameter really means now really simply put iambic pentameter is firstly one line of writing it's made up of 10 syllables okay bear in mind syllables is basically how many claps it takes you to say a word so for example my name is Barbara so therefore to say the word Barbara it would be Barbara that's three syllables because it takes me three times to clap my name out okay so going back to this it's one line of writing made up of 10 syllables so Barbara times three plus one extra syllable and the first syllable, so there's a particular order, okay? So the first syllable in this line is what we call unstressed. In other words, it just takes just a little bit shorter to pronounce. Then the second syllable that follows afterwards is stressed. It takes just a longer point to pronounce. My name is also a really interesting example of this pattern, okay? So unstressed, a syllable that takes just a little bit shorter to pronounce, and then stressed being a syllable that takes just a little bit longer to pronounce. Think about the name Barbara. Ba, ba, ra. Ba is much quicker, so we could argue that it's unstressed. Ba, which is the second syllable, is stressed. It takes just a little bit longer. And then the last part of my name, ra, is unstressed. That final syllable, the third syllable in my name, takes just a little bit shorter to pronounce. Now, as I mentioned, you will have one unstressed syllable followed by a stressed syllable and this happens five times in a sentence or a line of verse. In other words, you have one unstressed syllable, then a second stressed syllable, then a third unstressed syllable, then a fourth stressed syllable, then a fifth unstressed syllable, then a sixth stressed syllable, seventh unstressed syllable, eighth unstressed syllable, ninth unstressed syllable, ten unstressed syllable, okay? So therefore, there's ten syllables in one line, and the first is unstressed, second is stressed, third unstressed, fourth unstressed, and so on, okay? Now, as I mentioned, this pairing, so unstressed plus stress, happens five times. Now, bear in mind, an unstressed syllable coupled and paired with a stressed syllable is what we call a metrical foot, okay? So again, just bear in mind that a stressed syllable, ba, and then an unstressed syllable, ba, right? So taking just the first two syllables of my name, both of them going together is what we would call a metrical foot. Therefore, in iambic pentameter, there are five metrical feet. The first is a pair, second is a pair, third is a pair, fourth is a pair, and fifth is a pair. If you do five times two, that is 10 syllables in a line of writing. Hopefully, I haven't confused you. Hopefully, as I mentioned, please just make sure you just remember, number one, one line of writing. Number two, it makes up 10 syllables. So if you count the different syllables, how many times it takes you to clap that sentence, you clap 10 times that's 10 syllables the first syllable is unstressed the second is stressed and this happens 10 or, or rather this happens five times so unstressed stress unstressed stress and so on now as I mentioned I have come up with three examples taken from three separate Shakespeare plays all of which are written in iambic pentameter and I will walk you through it just to show you how you can spot iambic pentameter really easily the first is a quotation taken from what Macbeth says. Now Macbeth, he states, so foul and fair a day I have not seen. Now this phrase is iambic pentameter. As you can see here, it starts with an unstressed syllable followed by a stressed syllable. So, so foul. However, if you think about it, when I say so foul, so 
takes just a little bit shorter to pronounce, whilst foul takes a little bit longer, okay? So as you can see here, it's so foul, so unstressed, stressed, and fair, unstressed, stressed, a day I have not seen. If you count all of them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, that's 10 syllables in total, which makes it a perfect set of iambic pentameter. And as I mentioned, so foul go together as a metrical foot, okay? Then and fair, that's a metrical foot together, okay? So when you pair unstressed and stressed, that's one metrical foot. So if you remember the pairing of one, two, three, four, five, that is five metrical foot in this quotation. Now, the second quote let's look at with iambic pentameter is from the prologue in Romeo and Juliet, the prologue which is in the opening part of the play. And it states, two households both alike in dignity. Now here, this is iambic pentameter again because you've got the unstressed syllable starting two. Now you can see here, households has two syllables itself. So two households, that's three syllables so far, right? So house, two and house, house takes a little bit longer to pronounce than two okay so two house holds right so hopefully you can hear that there's a little bit more of a stress in house versus two and holds okay so as i mentioned unstressed syllable uh, it takes a little bit shorter to pronounce whilst a stress syllable it takes just a little bit longer to pronounce okay so as i mentioned here two house holds both which is a bit longer uh, now, as you can see here, alike is actually two syllables, even if it's just five letters. Ah, uh, which is an unstressed syllable, like, which is the stress syllables. In, which is the unstressed syllable, dignity. There's three syllables in dignity. You've got dig, which is stress syllable, knee, which is an unstressed syllable, and then T, which is a stressed syllable. And what I would like to suggest is maybe Google all of these phrases and just count for yourself and actually apply this technique. I'm gonna give you a final third quotation, and this is taken from Julius Caesar, and this is what Mark Antony says in his very famous Friends, Romans, Countrymen speech, okay? Now, he says, Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. Now again here, this is perfect iambic pentameter. You can clap as you're reading. Friends, friends, Romans, friends, Romans, uh, countrymen, lend me your ears. That's 10 perfect iambic uh, pentameter because there's 10 syllables. I'll show you the stress and unstressed. So friends is unstressed, ro, takes a bit longer than friends to pronounce, therefore it's stressed. Mens is unstressed, can, which is stressed. Tree, unstressed, men, stressed. Lend, unstressed, me, stressed, your, unstressed, is, stressed. Hopefully I haven't stressed you out with that explanation and you now kind of understand iambic pentameter. And what we'll suggest is literally, Shakespeare loved using iambic pentameter, as I mentioned, especially his upper class characters, because he usually used iambic pentameter to indicate the class and the superiority of the person who was speaking, whilst maybe lower class characters tended to either speak in prose or blank verse. So maybe you can look at key uh, plays, very famous plays such as Macbeth, Romeo and Juliet, Julius Caesar, but also you can look at other plays such as Twelfth Night, for instance, look at what Duke Corsino says at the beginning of the play in Act 1, Scene 1, then you can just kind of use different exercises and test yourself in terms of spotting and counting the different syllables and then seeing whether that's iambic pentameter or not. So hopefully this helps in understanding iambic pentameter.